when your Lord brings circumstances and situations in your life that are painful he allows these things to come into your life he permits them but he has a greater objective that is to break you to break your natural power to break your reliance upon yourself so that you will be useful in his hands so that it is not you but it is Christ so that it's not your power it's his power and he needs to bring the cross into your life and mind for that to happen to break us brokenness and this is where we as Christians can fight it resist it and then waste our sufferings and as I said this morning it will just come back to you in a different form because God doesn't fail his students he just makes them take the test over and over again <laughs> <laughs> what this does the cross in your life through circumstances by which you will now enter into a trial tribulation suffering this is in the New Testament sisters and brothers Philippians 3 entering into the fellowship of his sufferings Colossians 1 we fill up the sufferings of Christ through our afflictions. I'm going to read some passages to you because this is not often talked about. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss, loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing wealth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Loss, suffering, the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, may fellowship in his sufferings, may partake in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. That's Philippians 3, verses 7 to 8, and then verse 10. Now this aspect of the cross where he allows all hell to break loose in your life not only is designed to break you so that you can be useful in his hands and you rely on his power not your own it's also designed to transform you into the character of Jesus Christ and I wish I could tell you that this was not necessary but brothers and sisters it's all over the New Testament the cross in its transforming work. I'm just going to rattle these off. We rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. Romans 5 verses 3 to 4. You have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes though it's tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ first Peter 1 6 to 7 many will be purified cleansed and refined by trials that's Daniel 12 verse 10 Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. Isaiah 48.10 Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. James 1 verses 2 to 3 we cannot be transformed without the Lord bringing the cross into our lives because what that does is it causes you as you embrace that cross to make more room for Jesus Christ and less room for yourself and I can just tell you from my own experience if it wasn't for the trials that the Lord allowed in my life permitted in my life there is no way that he would have been able to gain ground in me. He can gain a little bit of ground, but he can't gain much unless the devastating blow of the cross comes into your life. 
But here's the breaking part. Listen to these passages. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 to 9. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength. We despaired of life itself. Here is the great apostle saying, we despaired of life itself. I remember a preacher years ago, he was young, he said, Christian ought never be depressed. Well, Paul Tarsus would not agree with that. He despaired of life. Indeed, we felt that we had received a sentence of death. This brother came to the point of despair and thinking and feeling that he was right at death's door. The suffering was so immense, it was immeasurable. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Praise the Lord. That's why the trial came. That's why the affliction came. That's why the inexplicable pain came. So I would not rely on myself. And Paul was naturally a very strong brother. Very strong brother. And God had to break him and shatter him and crush him so that there was more of Christ, less of him. Listen to the words, it's right there. So that, why all of this pain? Why all this suffering? We would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Praise the Lord. And here is the textbook for every minister of the gospel, every person who's in the Lord's work, everyone who serves God. It's 2 Corinthians 4, the whole chapter, but I'm going to read parts of it to you. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have this treasure in earthen vessels or jars of clay. I'm not speaking of the band, I'm speaking of the <laughs> translation. We have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Okay, now see the image. You have this beautiful vessel. Actually, it's not so beautiful. It's clay. It's probably unappealing, but there's a treasure in it. How do you get the treasure out? How does the treasure get released? The vessel has to be broken. It has to be broken. And then this is what he says in the next verse. How is the vessel broken, Brother Paul? We are pressed or troubled or afflicted on every side. Not crushed, though. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down. We're cast down. We're knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Are you seeing the paradox here? God's breaking the vessel, but I'm still living, only it's not me. I'm relying on the power of God, the life of God. He's gaining mileage in me. He's gaining ground in me because he's breaking me and I'm allowing him to do it. All right, now, somebody in this room <clears throat> is thinking this. Brother Frank, isn't it the devil that brings suffering and pain and heartache? You mean to tell me all the things I have gone through in my life, the hell that I have walked through, that's God? Okay, I'm going to solve this dilemma. <laughs> Who crucified Jesus Christ? I'm going to give you a few choices. The religious leaders in Jerusalem who were jealous of him. Okay, choice one. Choice two, the Romans who put the nails through his hands and his feet, who were ordered and instigated by the religious leaders. They pounded those nails and scourged him and put him on that cross. The Romans, choice number two. Choice number three, Satan who is above principalities and powers. For if the principalities and powers had known what they were doing, 
they would not have crucified the Son of God. So the devil. But wait a minute. All throughout the New Testament. And it was God the Father who delivered his Son unto death. God the Father who handed his Son to death. And the answer to the question, who crucified Jesus? Was it the religious Jews, the Romans, Satan, and God the Father? The answer is yes. But Satan would not have done anything unless the Father permitted it. And if he didn't permit it, you and I would not have any life at all. And the same principle works when you go through a hellish ordeal. Is Satan involved? Yes. And what he wants to do is cause you to blame man and or God and become bitter. Or at worst, take your life. But the hand of your God, the loving hand of your God, it passed through his hands before it got to you. And he is saying, I have a higher purpose. Submit to my breaking. This is the cross. You are fellowshipping with the sufferings of my son. Entering into it. Why? So the power of his resurrection may be in you, through you, and to others. Praise the Lord. And so Paul says in verse 10, 2 Corinthians 4, we are always carried away and we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, that's the cross, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. We allow the cross, the death of Jesus to work in us so that the life of Jesus may be manifested. Verse 11, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us and life in you. It is through death that we enter into life and it is through the death of his cross working in us as we yield to it, we submit to it, we let it break us that we are able to be those who release life. The treasure can get out of the vessel because it's been broken. Praise the Lord.